Tai Chi is Qigong, but Qigong is not yet Tai Chi. Well, that's a classic saying we hear in the Chinese martial arts circles. Qigong is any work where you develop, cultivate, increase the qi, or, and or mobilize the qi, circulate the qi inside the body. So there's seated qigongs, there's standing qigongs, moving qigongs, for different purposes, whether they're medical, martial, or spiritual. Tai Chi Chuan is more than that, it must be yin yang manifesting as the martial art. So developing the qi does not make Tai Chi Chuan. However, Tai Chi Chuan does develop the qi. In the same way that doing any other qigong will increase the qi and the dantian and the circulation throughout the body, so will practicing Tai Chi Chuan. In Tai Chi circles, a lot of people look to uh, supplement their Tai Chi training, thinking they need to do some other qigong training to supplement the Tai Chi. This is not truly correct because Tai Chi is already a qigong and is already serving that purpose. Some lineages will have Qigong set a specific for the Tai Chi Chuan path, which of course will supplement your practice and increase the rate of accumulating the Qi in the Dantian. So when you do the form, yes, you're developing the Qi, you're mobilizing the Qi. When you're doing your standing practice, even when you're playing push hands and so on, it's still Qigong, it's still the skill of mobilizing the Qi within the body. However, Qigong does, generally does not give you uh, martial art ability. It only gives you the juice, the energy, the fuel that you can put into your martial arts technique. So in this way, Tai Chi Chuan is Qigong, but Qigong is not yet Tai Chi. As some people talk about Tai Chi having Qin Na or not having Qin Na, uh, we have joint destruction, okay? Where you lock and fire the joint and destroy the joint. I wouldn't call it Qin Na exactly. But it, the question is, uh, it's kind of irrelevant. The true question is, can you do it? It has whatever you want to do. Tai Chi Chuan is what you become. The animal transforms, you become the Tai Chi creature. If you want to hit with it, you hit with it. If you want to fa, you want to lock, you want to Qin Na, it's up to you. The true question is, can you do it and can it be done to you? Techniques, mm, they're limited. But when you transform who you are, it's much more free the way you can apply any way you like. So maybe we'll try. You can try some chin now on me, see how it goes. Let's see. Does it have chin now? It's not really my thing. Can you do it? That's the true question. So like I said, uh, yeah, does it have chin now or not is not the point. The point is can you use it? That's the point of all art, really. Can you express it? So, you know, why don't you just try? Okay. Yeah. You, you do some chin now on me, okay. So if I'm stiff, okay, you get me straight away. You try, yeah. <laughs> I saw. You chin now. It comes back to me. Yeah, you do whatever you want. Free chin now. You do whatever you want. I let you get me in the lock fully. Crank it. Crank it, you see. More, you can take me down. Go. Good. Lock it. Lock it. You see. I just saw. I don't need to use any trick. You go. You do whatever. <laughs> Hey. Chin na. All right. You want to do the takedown? You do the takedown. So I'm purposely being very passive, but you try to yes. take me down. You can use more. Come. Ugh. So you see the empty hose? You can chin now. Yes, I feel that. Chin, lock me. I fill up. It feels like it becomes very strong and iron hard. Yeah. I change. You do like the elbow lock or something. I change you. Look me. Come. Hey. Ah. Yeah. But we have chin now too. What? I don't know chin now really.
But because I understand my skeleton from practice, I understand your skeleton from practice. So you want to control my skeleton? But my control over my joint is more than your control over my joint. My control over your joint is more than your control over your joint. Yeah. yeah? So you have the lock, but I have the lock. Yes. No need to learn chin now. Because of the focus on push hands, uh, a lot of people think that Tai Chi Chuan pushes and pulls and that it doesn't have striking or jin na, the throwing, kicking and so on. Of course, this is not true. It's a martial art. All martial arts have all those components. So the striking is simply striking. So we have punches, striking with the hands, with the blade of the forearm, elbows, shoulder, back, many ways to strike. So in fact, there are many, many strikes in Tai Chi Chuan. The whole body is a hand means that the whole body can strike. There's no contact point on the body you cannot strike with. The point is not to strike with Lee or stupid force or by throwing your mass around or simply accelerating the hand quickly, but how to be song and mobilize the chi inside the body so that the chi movement and the jin movement creates the power. So when you far, you're mobilizing the chi and making the power without any percussion, without any impact force, just through the body and out to send your opponent out like an arrow. They say to fire is like releasing an arrow. When you strike, you're essentially doing the same thing. The difference is there's a percussive force, a very specific impact point and so on. So of course, the best way is to show, we can just look at how it works. So of course, in the form, there's endless postures, you know, this is striking, the punching, the five punches, the different directions of striking, the elbowing, cow, the shoulder stroke, the whole body is a hand. So we strike like any other art. We hit them. How you do it, how you generate the power is different, and how you control the situation is different. So, yeah, I guess we just try something. Okay. So, yeah, so you just come, striking. Boom, okay. So, when you come, I change my posture. I strike, you see it? Or you come again, I striking, you come, I strike. So you see in slow motion when I move, I change punch, I change my body, I apply force. So the same as any other art. I place my body, I control, this is the sticking skill, and I put the gin inside. Okay, sticking, you see, striking. So I move my body, I move my body and I stick, okay? So we do in normal time. Or after we connect, you strike, we connect, it becomes sticking or grappling situation. Come, you see, we strike. I can move, we can stick like Chi Sao. You can move freely, okay? So I'm only touching you very lightly. Okay. Yep. When you come, I stick. I have control over the body. You want to do something? I want to do something. Okay? We use the kicking. Come. You want to strike, you come. Then, okay. I strike. Ha! Ah, I strike. Here, yeah, I strike. And I control. Dealing with striking, of course, is about uh, timing and placement where you put your body the ability to use pole, to ward off, to stick and to control. So the problem with many Chinese martial arts is they kind of stand there and try to do the art and they don't move their body or their head. So they think they're going to block and use all these things against a boxer that's going to come in fast. They're going to be shifting their head and moving around you with fast footwork and quite simply they get dominated. The reason they get dominated is because your opponent's target is moving continuously, you, you keep missing and your target is standing there like a dummy. So how to deal with striking, first thing is to move. Don't be there. This is Hua, like neutralizing or transforming their force to make it neutral in reference to you. So we use placement to put the body in the right place and sticking to control the partner, to capture their strike or to capture their mass, to control them, to make it very difficult for them to strike or even so they cannot strike at all. So we use footwork shifting changes, sticking, and then we counter strike or throw. So I would say timing, placement, and power is how we deal with striking. These are the same skills we develop in pushing hands. When I'm receiving and yielding, 
what I'm actually training is not just the hand, but the whole body. Learning how my body and your body interact and we have a relationship and a conversation. So that I can place myself at optimal angle in reference to you. I can slightly evade the force so I don't get pushed over in reference to you, which is the same as your striking. If I can just get out of the way of your push, I can just get out of the way of your striking. Rather than standing there and trying to ground and trying to be tough and root it out all the time, which is like standing there and getting punched in the nose. True pushing hands teaches you about placement, timing, and power. And these are the three things. These three pillars of application are what you bring into the striking, whether you're attacking or defending. So normal conventional power, Li, external power, is basically how much mass you can connect up, your body weight, your muscle size, and how much you can accelerate it. So the more you can accelerate your whole body and throw your fist out and everything, the more power. Totally efficient, works, nothing wrong with it. In internal method, we're not dependent on throwing the mass. It doesn't mean you can't throw your mass. Of course you can. The problem is when you throw your mass, you are vulnerable to being off balanced between A and B. That throwing moment, at that moment of throwing the hand out or throwing your weight around, there's no mindfulness, there's no control, you can't stop, you're, you're stuck in momentum. Yes. So this has a mild disadvantage. However, if you combine the internal with the external motion of moving your mass with velocity, of course the power is going to be extreme. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate on Andy. Okay. For example, if we're touching, we'll just do it in the push hands model. Uh, if I had to throw my mass, of course I'd bring my body in, probably dig under, you see this kind of thing trying to use my legs and waist and body and boom, move my mass into the object to push him back. This is okay in the beginning, but it's not, not the proper Tai Chi way, which should be the power moving through your body, like water running through a hose, rather than picking up the hose to hit somebody with the hose. Yep. Or I often say, external martial arts is like pistol whip. You pick up the gun and you beat the hell out of somebody with it. Internal martial art is like putting the gun on them and pull the trigger. The insides move, not the outside. So instead of mobilizing my mass, I just bring the chi out and they go. My mass doesn't move. The hand can move or not move. So if he pins me in it's slightly, yep. go. The advantage is that wherever he touches me, I can generate the power. So maybe he takes my back, I can fire. Takes another angle, back and far, without having to bring my mass into it. So this means if it's a grapple, or he's giving you like a cuddle, so my mass is demobilized. Yes. I can't accelerate my mass. He wants to tip me off balance or something, I can sink the chi and far. Okay. He comes in, takes the body, I far. <coughs> Through the body, not crash the body around. Now when you're striking, I come in and strike, say I strike here, yes I'm moving my hand towards his head at speed, but really the power is here. This is reaching out to touch somebody. This is the da. So I go, what? the speed, sure, but when I touch, the far comes out. So we combine the acceleration of the hand and the speed and mobilization of the mass with the internal mobilization of the chi to increase the power output. So using this method, is this the true meaning of like a one inch punch or a no inch punch? Is this the, the real engine that should be used? I can't talk about other styles. Everything in Tai Chi Chuan is no inch. Even when you go from a distance, it's still happening at no inch. Everything is short. So when we're doing a form, it looks like, wow, that's like a big, big movement, you know? Like, well, I'm going to wind up and hit. It's not that. It's they touch here. This movement here, this is power. This is power. This is power. Every inch of the movement is power. So anytime they touch you, he just touches me randomly while I'm doing the form. It's always generating no inch power. It's a constant thing. So we don't want to have no power, a power curve and then power. We have maximum power all the way. Yep. So it's like a, a Tesla. It's like an electric car. It just goes, poof, you're off. So from any point, you have full power.
There's a debate in the Tai Chi world whether the power is generated by the structure, which is sort of the mechanical Western view, or if it's generated by something else, like maybe the mysterious Qi or something like that. Okay. Uh, my view is very simple. No, the power does not come from structure at all, period. Structure or your skeletal alignment is should be maximized as correct as possible to allow the muscles to release. If your structure is contorted and twisted, your ability to release the muscles or song is impeded. If you can truly song and release all the muscles, then you can generate the power through the mobilization of the chi. However, in the beginning, for many years, your song will be dependent on your structure. So no, the power does not come from the structure, but the structure is a condition to create song and then the power comes from the song. Later, yeah, it's easier to be in broken structure and be able to make power at any angle and so on. The fact is, fighting is not perfect. It doesn't turn out how you want it. You're not always gonna be in a perfect shape. You must be able to generate power at any time. So if I was using my structure to generate the power, which is okay in the beginning, it means I'd always have to be in, say we're touching, I'd always have to be in my perfect shape, and bang, I'm gonna fire, or everything's gonna be just how I want it to be, right? Yeah. No scrap that I've ever been in turned out how I wanted it to be. Even ordinary life, everything goes wrong every step of the way. Fighting is something's gone totally wrong. So then we expect it to all be perfect. It's not gonna happen. So, for example, if you trap me up or make me uncomfortable and break my structure, okay, so my structure's broken, my shoulder nest is closed, my hips are up, you've controlled me, make yourself really stable. If I try to use structure, I'm going to be stuck. I can't do anything. You've seized me up. So this is how trapping works and things like that. Yes. But if I can remain song and not depend on my structure at all and release inside and use the chi, then I can move freely. No matter how you break my structure. Okay. I'm pinned, but I'm song. So you try to trap me more. You feel trap me. So anytime you feel like you've trapped me, Actually, I'm not trapped at all. I'm totally free. Yes. So no, the, the structure is not the power. I can be in a totally broken structure. Everything wrong. Oh, I'm broken, I'm broken. I song, I use the chi, and you go. It makes no difference. Any shape you put me in, you say you cross me. Okay, I'm in real trouble. Yes. If I try to use structure, it's not going to work. So I don't. I use the chi, and I song. <laughs> so... We use structure, it's ideal for developing song. As we develop the song further and further, we become song naturally all the time. We no longer need to depend on structure. Of course, perfect shape is better, but life isn't perfect. So this is only at the later stages of training, right? When you reach a higher level, people that start training at the beginning, they're not gonna be able to do this. Would I be right in saying that? Absolutely, they should be focusing on the structure. Focusing on doing everything perfectly the way their teacher tells them to do. You don't ever try to do the outcome. The outcome happens from following the method. The outcomes grow on their own. You plant the seeds, the flowers grow. In Tai Chi, we don't condition the body at all in the sense of hitting the body or doing like any hard conditioning, hitting with wood or hands or anything like that. Uh, we still develop a, a, an iron robe, the ability to take strikes quite well it's a natural byproduct of sinking the chi. When you sink the chi, you achieve fullness and therefore you have like a field of protection. The body becomes very full and powerful. So there's no specific training for it. However, in my experience, students are scared of being hit. It's natural, it's normal. And the problem is when you're scared, the chi comes up, you tense, all the qualities that are giving you your natural iron robe disappear. So to train the iron robe, I get the students to get used to being hit, to break down the mental barriers of fear and so on. At the same time, they're doing their normal Tai Chi Chuan training, which involves a lot of sinking the chi, opening the body and so on, which gives you the iron robe. However, you have a mental block, it's called fear. So learning how to hit and get hit and get used to pain and getting past the great mind killer of fear allows your natural iron robe to manifest. So we don't do specific training for it other than getting past the block of fear and training the mind. Tai Chi Chuan naturally does the rest. Of course, striking, the essence of striking is that you're gonna get hit sometimes. 
especially Tai Chi Chuan likes to come in close, so we have to be willing to get struck on the way in. Of course, you don't want to get struck on the way in. If your pong is good, if your angles are good, if your placement is good, the percent comes way down. But getting struck is part of fighting. So before we ask about the iron robe, how it works, uh, I'm old and lazy, so I'll just let you try on one of my students, okay? okay? Now, don't hold back, punch with everything you have. You're a trained martial artist, try to fold him in half. Okay. Yeah. Okay, come. Harder. Wow. Okay, why don't you try like a tie kick or something? Because, you know, belly's not everything, the whole body's a target. So how does it feel? It's coming back to me. Yeah. It starts to hurt my leg. We're not an iron rub style. We don't want to stand there and get hit, but it's going to happen. So you don't want to even notice. They should notice, not you. 